Hey guys, this video is going to be about automata equivalency. Uh, basically what that means is we're trying to determine if any two automatons that we're given are equivalent. So if they accept the same language, then they are equivalent. We This, this is going to be a bit of a process, um, but we can stop it early if we find out that the pair of initial states so here it's A and C if we find out that these are distinguishable then we can stop the entire algorithm immediately so let's get to it first I want to explain this table this table is arranged this way just so that we don't end up looking at duplicate state pairs so we don't want to look at things like C and C or D and D or A and A so there's no special technique for this table it just you don't want to look at those kinds of pairs so what's easiest is to just start at the bottom here along the x-axis just go alphanumerically up and then forget the last one so here we up to we have up to state E you just forget state E here and then you start from B the second state alphanumerically again along the y-axis go down and this time you include E that's pretty much it for that. The first thing that we want to do is we want to look at all pairs of states. So right away, we have, I don't want the eraser, we have A and B, we have A and C, we have A and D, we have A and E, and then we have B and C, we have B and D, and we have B and E, and then we have C and D, C and E, and then D and E. So again, we're really just looking at distinguishabilities of states individually. So something like D and C, this doesn't matter. You only want to use the same two states once when you're doing your pairs. So now we can check out our pairs of states and for any pair that contains one final state not two just one we have to mark it in our little table with an X so right away we have a and B B is a final state so right away a and B and then we have a and D B and C not B and D because remember we're, like B and D are both final states but we're only looking for one if one of these pairs has one final state then we're marking it so B and E is another one C and E nope C and D yes D and E yes so we're marking all of these with an X so A and B X and we'll write a little zero at the top the reason why we're doing the zero is because in the algorithm this is actually the basis step. This is more or less an inductive algorithm, right? So when you're doing induction, when you're doing a proof by induction or an inductive algorithm, you always start with a base sort of case, like a, like, like a basis step. That's why we're marking it with a zero, because this is the absolute basis, base step. All right, so we have A and B, A and D, and then B and C, and then B and E, and C and D and then D and E which we already have so now we're essentially going to travel down our list from top to bottom traveling down our table and we're going to look at each pair of states on each possible input Okay. And what we're looking at is only incoming transitions. So when I say an incoming transition, I mean an arrow going into the state. So when we look at A and B on 0, um, A has nothing, and B has itself as well as A. But the cool part about this algorithm is that as soon as we get an empty state, which is A in this case, because there's nothing on 0 going into A, we end up with the empty set, as soon as we end up with the empty set, we can just stop that step. So now we're moving on. We don't even care about what B is because... 
sorry, because when we do the Cartesian product, it's kind of like multiplying. If you multiply something by zero, it's just zero. So that's why we don't care. All right, A and B on one, we will end up with, I'm not gonna do curly brackets. I hate curly brackets, so I'm gonna just do regular brackets from now on. So A and B on one, we have A and B. But again, we have the empty set as well, so we don't care. I'm not going to write an X. That might get a little confusing since we're drawing X's in our table. Uh, OK, so now we're moving down our table. Now we end up with B and C. OK, so B, 0 is itself and A. So we have A and B. And then C, we have uh, D and, is there a bit of a brain fart going on here? All right, so there was some stuff that was happening downstairs. So I did a bit of a step here as well. So going to C on zero, we only have D. So now we have some stuff that we can do a Cartesian product with. So a Cartesian product is just multiplication again. So we're multiplying A by D and then B by D. So then we end up with states A and B and B and D. And that's important. And I'll tell you why after we do this input. So B on one, we don't have any incoming uh, transitions. So that's empty. Uh, so we don't do it. But now, now we're on to the next step because we actually have some states to work with now. We've already done A and B, we've already crossed it off, so we can kind of forget that. So that's just right here. Now we have B and D though. B and D is not marked. And since we're kind of in the first step of our algorithm, we can do a one here. So now what happens is we start working with B and D on zero and then B and D on one. Okay, so B on zero incoming are A and B. And on D on zero incoming it's C and E. Okay, so we have some stuff to do a Cartesian product with again. Okay, so we have A we have states A, C, we have states A, E, I should probably put commas here. Okay, we have states B, C, and we have states B, E. Okay, so we actually, we can stop here. We don't even have to do this one because like I mentioned at the start of the video, I feel like I mentioned it at the start of the video. It may have been another take, but anyway. Once you reach the pair of initial states and you determine that they are not distinguishable, uh, sorry, that they are distinguishable, once you realize that the initial states are distinguishable, you can just stop the whole algorithm. Because as soon as you realize that the first two states that we're starting any, any type of input on, as soon as you realize that they're different, then that's it. It's game over. These two these two automatons do not accept the same language. So we can put an X in A and C, and that will be two because we're on our second step here. Remember we got B and D from our um, first step. Oh no, we're on A and C, so it's X two. Now, if your professor really hated you and made you fill out this whole table. If you ended up filling up the entire thing except for the initial state, then the automatons are not necessarily distinguishable. You have to fill this entire table to make sure that every single state is different. So 
like on our midterm, there was a part two to this question. And that question was basically, are these automatons different or are they the same and why? It's a completely acceptable answer just to say they're different just because the two initial states are distinguishable. That's it, that's all you need. So uh, I hope that was clear. Uh, thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe and thumb up and suggest ideas for new videos and happy studying.